StarCast 5, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, gearing up to be a huge event you don't want to miss. Amazing stage shows and live wrestling with shows from Black Label Pro, GCW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and of course, Ric Flair's Last Match, which has an amazing lineup of talent from all over the wrestling landscape. Headlined by Ric Flair's Last Match, and you can follow the story leading up to the match over at Ric Flair's Last Match. Com. We've got new episodes Mondays at 6.05 Eastern. For tickets and more information, go to StarCast.com. What does the future hold for WWE? Well, you know, at least I'm going to make that $1,000 on that Braun Breaker, Brett. Okay, I'm glad about that one. Because, uh, you know, he's going to get a big push. And he's going to headline a WrestleMania. Probably, uh, perhaps sooner rather than later. But, hey, remember all those times that I said so-and-so was a can't-miss on the main roster? Oh, this person, you can't miss on this. Oh, you can't miss. Guess what? Well, things have changed. Things have changed. Listen, Triple H, he had his highs and lows when he was in charge of NXT. Those takeovers, awesome. Because what he did was he would put together what would be an awesome card and then work backwards. Uh, Name the last bad takeover that was put together by Triple H. Is every WWE pay-per-view going to be like a takeover? Well, of course not, because I think even, you know, everybody realized, well, things are different on the main rosters compared to uh, to NXT. But it's not that different in the sense that this was a guy that was open to using anybody that was able to work and get over. I mean... As I talked about today on the Breaking News Audio with Dave, look at how over Sami Zayn was when he was in NXT. And compare that. I mean, he's his he does a great job with his current character today, but he isn't in the universe of as over as he was when he was in NXT. You guys all talk about the women and Sasha Banks and Bailey. With the exception of when Becky just exploded on the main roster in 2018, early 2019, which, I mean, that was never the plan. She managed to pull that off for a lot of different reasons. But all of them, they all were at their peak when they were in NXT. Why did Adam Cole leave and go to uh, go to AEW? Well, they wanted him to go up to the main roster and be Budge and a manager on the main roster. And uh, what, did, what did Triple H do with, with Adam Cole? What did he do with Johnny Gargano? What did he do with, with all of the top stars that he was given? Who did he push? I mean, the fact of the matter is, I am over the moon excited at the possibilities of a Triple H uh, WWE with Vince McMahon completely out of the picture. You ever watch uh, those video packages? What do you like better, the, the video packages and such on, on those old NXT shows when Borash was in charge or the stuff that we see we see nowadays? Uh, the production. Some some will, I'm sure, argue the uh, uh, stuff on the main roster, but not me. They had some awesome, awesome video packages. The crew that they had down there in NXT, the idea of seeing some of that old school NXT stuff being brought to the main roster, it's not going to be totally the same, but we're going to see a lot of those things that Triple H did right. Here's the key. We're going to see a lot of those things that Triple H did right, and all those things that Vince did wrong, he's gone. So, yes, I'm excited. He's a pro wrestler. What about you, Mike? There's a big delay there, apparently. He's a pro wrestler. And even if you want to say he's a sports entertainer, fine. <laughs> Bottom line is, is he's worked in the ring. He knows how to bring people up and down. Vince, yeah, he did it to a certain degree, but he was Vince, and he had his certain vision. I think when you put a professional wrestler in there, they're going to look at things differently. And some maybe wins and losses are actually going to matter more. Maybe not every physical body type is going to matter as much as how you can make people react. Maybe because the scripts are still going to be there for lots of guys. Maybe guys who don't need those. Maybe we see less of that and more talking points given to people like, oh, I don't know. Who would be a good Triple H one who is going to have a long life there? Kevin Owens. He's going to have a long life anyway. But you know what? Does Kevin Owens Does Kevin Owens need anything other than some talking points to go out there and do anything? Of course he doesn't. 
you know? So hopefully we see a little of that loosened up. Hopefully we see a lot of the terminology that Vince absolutely loved pronouns, pal. All that sort of stuff. The universe, the belts not being bro, said. Bro, all that let me sort jump in. Stuff. Go let ahead. me jump in. I already yeah. saw it on SmackDown. Now, mm-hmm. SmackDown was not a night and day show, but absolutely, Michael Cole, listen, I have not been the biggest Michael Cole fan over the years, but he was miles better on SmackDown. He didn't have some dude screaming in his ear the entire time. At one point, he actually said, the WWE fans. I almost I almost fell out of my chair when he called them fans. He didn't call them the WWE universe. Started now, granted, the show that way. They're still going to they're still going to brand things. And as I mentioned on a show a couple of days ago, listen, if you want to brand WrestleMania as stupendous and you want to have everybody say stupendous on every show, whatever, I don't care. But that was by the way a Vince thing and he even admitted in an interview, I like words like stupendous. But listen, if you want to do that now that's fine, but Let's loosen up a little bit. Let's say fans. Let's say belts. Let's let uh, New Day, which they did, by the way, come on TV and talk about the Viking Raiders, which, by the way, they didn't change that one. They're now still the new vicious Viking Raiders, which we can drop that one as soon as it's possible if, if, if uh, I mean, if I had my way. But anyway, uh, you know, he's out there going, these guys, have they've, they've been killers everywhere they've gone. Ring of Honor, he says. He starts to talk about the IWGP Tag Team Championships. And then, of course, they moved on from that. But, you know, what I want is a show where everybody is a little more real, a little more organic, a little yes. more loose. And you know what? We saw that to a degree already on SmackDown. Talk to your fans like they're fans, not like they're just little chips to market to and little wallets to try to extract money out of. Talk to them like that every once in a while. Yes, we know that's what you're doing. You're big business. This is America. Capitalism. We know how this works, no matter what anybody says about Stephanie and the the charity being the marketing thing. We all knew that to be true. She just happened to say it, which made her actually, you know, get the slings and arrows. That's how they think. We know what this is. But every once in a while, can you just remember that this thing is pro wrestling? It's still in a ring. If you want to do what Lucha Underground was going to do and have wrestling be the background for your sports entertainment, fine. If that's what you're going to do. But, you know, WWE WWE is still wrestling, and there's little adjustments that they can make that are is not going to change their philosophy and how they do things and make them any smaller and can make the product that much better. And one of the ways you can do that is some of the verbiage that you present on that show. There are many other things that I hope and wish will change as time goes on, but that's definitely something that really talk like normal human beings every once in a while. You know what I want tonight? Set. I want to see Matt Riddle. I want to see, see maximum Austin male models. Theory. I want to see... I don't really need to see Austin Theory. But my point is, I, I'm ready for names to come back. I'm ready for people to be allowed to have a first and a last name. Listen, if you, if you have decided, I don't want anyone going... I don't want Pete Dunne going to AEW as Pete Dunne. Because he, he, he used the name before WWE. Fine. You want to call him whatever, that's fine. But the Vince's weird quirks that he had where, you know, I I don't want this guy to have the first name Austin. I want him to be, just be Theory. And you know why? It's because I think is is what's Austin Theory's real name? Uh, Vince's know. decree was basically like if if uh if you use the name on the indies then you can't be that name anymore. Walter, for example. Okay, but also, if if part of your name was part of your real name, not even the whole thing. So, like, John Cena's real name is John Cena, okay? If John Cena had gone to Ohio Valley Wrestling as uh, Johnny Rocket Ship, okay, when he went to the main roster, Vince, even though Johnny Rocket Ship is not his real name, with Vince's new decree, he couldn't be Johnny Rocket Ship because his real first name is John. Therefore, he would have to just be Rocket Ship. Or he could be Frank Rocket Ship or whatever. This is stupid, okay? Just give people names. Like, no, why is this guy named Theory, okay? It's not even like. So I would like to see that. I would like to see a loosening up of promos. 
I would like to see uh, more than the same eight people on the show every single week. I would like more people to get opportunities. I would like to stop hearing the word opportunity. I would like to be able to hear the word title shot and championship match. You know, and, and they're not going to be, as as I think we talked about in other shows, there's not going to be massive changes right out of the gate. It's not like all of a sudden Nigel McGinnis is going to do commentary. They're going to get rid. They don't want to make massive changes where it feels like the boat is being rocked, okay? But you can make small changes. You can call the guy Matt Riddle again. You can call the guy Austin Theory again. You can you can slowly bring some of this stuff back. Instead of cutting the camera 100 times during a punch sequence, you can only do 50 times. Let's ease our way into some of these changes and make for a better show. And have better, more cohesive planning because he was Austin Theory on the indie scene long before you signed him. It was a pretty cool name. It fit. He's fine because he's Austin White. And because he used the name Austin Theory on the Indie, I mean, plan this stuff out better. And I hope that there's better, with Triple H overseeing everything, make sure that NXT, you have something set there so we don't have these changes like Butch and these sudden changes like Raquel Rodriguez when we get up to the main roster. Cause it's hey, so- listen, when we come back from this break, I'm going to tell you something that's 100% changed for the better. Back in a moment, Observer Live. You want to know 100%, 100% something today that's changed for the better. What's that? Vince has not shown up and torn up the script. <laughs> and, he, and he never will again. Rusty, Rusty Rose, 10, 4, 86. <laughs> Dusty, is it Rusty or Dusty? <laughs> it's, uh, it's Dusty. Harmon Blanchett. <laughs> Okay, out of ring. <laughs> Herman and Blanchett. <laughs> Harwin. Way back then, they had cha- chain barricades. <laughs> and then they had a tag team with Rich Fl- uh, Rick Flair and some more guys. And so that was that. I'm just too good. Who, who <laughs> did Rusty Rhodes wrestle? If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.